I'm Kevin Devine and this is Divine Encounters. James Max was a semi-finalist on the BBC show The Apprentice. Since then he's carved out a great career for himself on both radio and television. I've been at LBC for six years now yeah. and I have to say it's a dream come true because when I was growing up, LBC was the first commercial radio station in the UK. 1973 is when it started, and I was three at the time. But when I was about eight or nine, my brother said, you know, and I was given a little radio for my birthday or something, and he said, oh, you know, these commercial radio, they're really edgy and yep. all that, and I didn't really answer. Anyway, so I sort of started listening, but really in my teens, that's when I started to listen to it. And I thought, you know, one day, yes, please. So I've ended up there, but I also spent a couple of years at the same time I was on TalkSport. Yeah. And one right. of the first things I learned was they said, look, when somebody asks you a question, when you're a contributor, could you please give your answer first and explain later? Because yeah. so many people, you ask a question, blah, 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 and then at some point you might get the answer. Well, by then, your brain switched off and you're, you know, making tea or coffee and haven't thinking about biscuits. Sure. It's no good. So do answer the question quickly, concisely, straight away, then justify it. Great explanation there. And um, you've talked about your radio career. Just taking you a wee bit outside of the media and things, you've yes. got a couple of passions as well. Oh, yes. Um, you're known for your cars. I love a car. Now, some and people... One in particular. Yes, it's Eric the Electric Motor Vehicle. That's the one you're talking about. Listen, I hate paying tax. Who doesn't? And so when they came along with this brilliant idea of this congestion charge, I mean, here we are in, the, in London. Is it any less congested? Uh, I don't think so. I think it turned into a tax. Anyway, they came up with this idea, but they said there are certain cars which are exempt. And I thought, right, let's have a look at those. Then they came up with this brilliant idea in, in the uh, borough of Westminster, where they said, if you have not just one of these cars that's congestion charge free, but you have an electric car, then you can park on one of our meters for four hours for free. Well, ka -ching. Free, hello, yeah. I am there. And I thought, well, do I really like sitting on the bus? I don't mind. I use the tube to get here. People say, do you really tell it? Yes, I do. Mm. But I thought, this thing, it is so hideous. And I have a dog. And because I have a dog, they get messy paws and slobber and all and hair and uh -huh. stuff. And so I really don't care about the interior of this thing. So if he wants to jump up with his muddy paws and all the rest of it, and if people want to laugh, then it's terrific. But it costs virtually nothing to run. There's no congestion charge. Insurance is a couple of hundred quid a year. Um, you can park it for free. There's no congestion charge. It just makes sense for somebody who is an urbanite like me to travel around London if and when, particularly because I have to do a lot of things at really anti-social hours. Do I really yeah. want to be clambering on the night bus with people who are, may or may not be sick on you uh, on or, my way in to go to work? Probably not. Or even people going, yeah, that James Max off the radio, isn't you? Yes, they do and do that. that. <laughs> uh, that's something, I, that's something I, I don't like. So if you are Lash, please leave me there. Uh, if you're not Lash, I don't mind, really honest. Um, but that's, that's one car. The other car, which I guess people do know me for, is the Aston. Um, but this is one extreme to the other. The absolutely. I've got the best car and the worst car. Oh, oh, but you see, look, leading by example, there I had green Jenny Jones. There yeah. she was in the studio and she was going on about how environmentally unfriendly I know. And I said, oh, well, I do have an electric car. And then suddenly the wind was taken out of the woman's sails. Yeah. They, can, they can't pen you down in that. Well, they can't. But the Aston, I have to say, I'm, I'm not actually interested in flash cars, fast cars particularly. Mm -hmm. What I am interested in is great design, brilliant workmanship and something which is a pleasure to drive. I know that certain brands of car and makes of car always top the chance for, you know, being the most this or the most economical or the most that. But I'd actually rather walk than have to sit in a Prius. They're just horrible. <laughs> the, the seats are wrong, they smell horrible, they drive badly, it's like it handles like a sausage. I'm not interested. The top gear boys would be in complete agreement. They're always I think they sliding would. off. They're, you know, they always say, anytime the price is mentioned, they always go off and look down their nose. Apart from the time Cameron Diaz said that she had one and suddenly they all changed. Well, I'm afraid shape. that I would not change my tune for that either. I'm sorry, they are a hideous motor vehicle and they should be banned. 
but there are I mean few cars I've, I've been very lucky I've driven a lot of top-end cars from uh, a, a Bugatti Veyron and oh. I've driven a Ferrari and I've driven you know really old classic cars E-type Jags and Mercedes and all sorts of things I, I love a car I probably wouldn't have any of those just because I, I think they're too difficult to live with I think if you live in London you've got to have a car which is easy to live with um, and, and you've got to have a car which is practical and fits your lifestyle nothing better in my view than having a car that you can take the lid off but not as of course when we were growing up in the 1980s one of the cheapest cars that you could take the lid off was a Skoda but then of course the joke was that you know it's a skip yes on absolutely. wheels and it was although they've changed now but um, well they have of course owned by Volkswagen well done but would I want one no, no thank you I'm not having a car called a Fabia I don't think I'd trade the Aston in for it just at the moment I, I wouldn't do that no I'm not sure I would either. Do you ever get mistaken for Bond in it? For what? For James Bond. Never. Never? No. Why? It's never happened to well, me. Well, he's filming around London just I now. I know he so is. So I think... I Look a little bit different from, from the Bond. With and the also glasses. Put the sunglasses on, James. Yeah, and, and dye my hair and or, <laughs> and or lose a few. You and me both, I think, you know. Oh, dear. Now, there's, there's a good thing about radio. Don't have to worry what you look like. <laughs> That's what you'll notice when you meet any of your radio presenter friends. You'll go, oh, you don't quite look how I perceive. You see, because when I did The Apprentice, I was televisually fit. Because uh -huh. I used to go to the gym all the time. But the reason for that was that I hated my job. Oh, so this was a get out and escape. Like yeah, if you, if you hate your job, you go to the gym loads. Yeah. And if you love your job, then you're so busy doing other things that you forget that maybe you, you should be eating less and, and doing more. I'm afraid I'm a bit guilty of that just now as well. Aren't we all biscuits? And do you have any other passions apart from the cars? Oh, many. Um, a lot of people say that I have a passion for music, which I do. And with, I don't know how many thousands it is, but let's guess at 36,000 items on the iTunes, there's a lot of music wow. that I listen to. And I listen to a range of stuff. I love contemporary new pop, and I think I'm quite good at picking out new artists and up and, 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 and up and coming. I do like a, a bit of trashy pop. I like mash mixes. I like dance music, all that stuff. But then I also love chill music. And there is very little outlet for chill music, whether it's things like Future Loop Foundation or sure. Lemon Jelly or Zero Seven, all those sorts of things. You know, very little outlet for that. But that's the sort of thing that I listen to when I'm doing other things because it you can listen to it and you're not distracted mm. if it's songs with lyrics then I'm afraid I start humming along and, and then get distracted are we ever going to see a wee James Max nightclub night then do you think where you're Never. DJing actually going no no radio no I'm not? too old I'd look like a pedo in a corner it'd be a disaster well, nowadays I think that whole scene's changing no it really know? isn't yeah. and then you've got loads of kids running around, around with eyes like dinner plates no thanks <laughs> well look <laughs> alcohol is so expensive London is awash with Colombian marching powder and all the rest of it and and oh it's relatively cheap compared to all the stuff that you could buy legally what are the kids doing oh. well you know we, we've got a real problem and I I I'm, I'm not terribly interested in, in in that scene but what I do do is I have a website on the website jamesmax.co.uk there we go what do you mean you don't want to go and look at it? Go and look at it now! jamesmax.co.uk On there I do blogs which hopefully are thought provoking but I also do something called the Max Mixtape and every month I put one or two of these things up and it's got the latest tracks, new videos that you may or may not have seen yet some interesting stuff of either covers or mash mixes, things like that and also some oddities uh, that I've found so for example this month I do believe that Jeremy Clarkson is in a microwave and I've got some dancing cows and dining dogs that's, Who wouldn't? It sounds like that's life. Uh, well, exactly. Why has no? That. Why has nobody bought that program back? Hey. It's, and we rang the gas board. Oh yes, please. It's an question. It's an age old question. And so they should do. Something else though on the internet, which I'm fascinated by. We've talked about Twitter, which oh. I think is, it it really is, life changing, uh, society changing, and it's not just for celebs to get their stuff out. It's it's much more than that, and I think it's it's a brilliant thing that has been taken on. But the other thing which we're beginning to see emerging is that there are a whole range, particularly boys, but teenagers and 20-somethings who've decided I can't get into the media because I'm not a one-legged black lesbian and therefore I just want to go off and show my talent. Like I can play music or I can do things or I'm creative or whatever it is. And there are, and they've got tens if not hundreds of thousands of followers and subscribers on YouTube, on Twitter and these people are doing some brilliant stuff. Our new stars are already on the internet. They're already there. They're, it's not manufactured the Lily Allen. Oh, she was on, you know, she was on um, whatever it was, face page. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Oh dear, Murdoch made a mistake with that one, wasn't it? 
MySpace or MySpace. Well, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think the way the, the industry, especially for music and, and creativity, is changing. Oh, it's changed completely. Is that it's, I suppose it's a bit like the 60s again, where youth is finding its power. I don't know. I wasn't born in the 60s. Oh, were well, you? No, I'm afraid I was. Oh, dear. Are you I was a, very young. I of course very, you were. Very of young. course you were. Very young. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure I would. I mean, I know. People say, oh, you know, you really wanted to be around in the 60s if you were. No, I don't I think I was. Young. I was too young. I but there was I no it. iPads, there was no technology and telly and all these other things. No, forget it. And then, you know, I mean, now I look at the stuff which is available to us, and I know that a lot of people hark back, and, and people will say, oh, but the 70s were great because, you know, children drank out of hose pipes and, and didn't, <laughs> and, you know, didn't wear things and they ate sweets that turned them, you know, yellow or purple yes. or all that. And it was great to grow up in the 70s and the 80s, and there are some wonderful things that came out of it. And I think we learnt that having a society that has no direction is a disaster. Having a society that's too focused on direction can also be a disaster, and there must be a happy medium. And, and hopefully we're reaching that. But I have to say that what is available today, despite all the unrest and all the economic difficulties, we don't know how lucky we are. Oh, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. Um, it's been royally entertaining to meet you today. It's Lovely to meet you too. So we, we've got the Twitters. Yes, we please. I'd, I'd listen, I, I love people to follow me. Seriously, not Brilliant. because I want to sort of bang up the numbers, but just because I do genuinely control it myself. I answer people. Yeah. The James Max, please. Go and do it. The James... Oh, come on, do it now. And then the other thing is radio. Yeah. Weekend breakfast. LBC 97.3. You can get it on an app. You can get it on the internet. You can get it on your Virgin Media and your Sky. LBC, I think, has really changed over the last five to six years. Since I got there, when I first arrived, you had to talk about the contents of a lady's handbag. Mm. Now we are focused on news-led agenda, but it's the only place, because other places have gone all sport or they have to be impartial, it's the only place where you can really ask good questions, have a good conversation, have your say about things which matter, and, and also presenters who are non-judgmental. Sure. And a great conversation. Devil's so, advocates. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I thoroughly persuade you, if you've never listened before, my colleagues, I'm working with some of the greatest talk show presenters in the UK, and they are all on the station. I'm there two weekend breakfast, seven till 10, Saturdays and Sundays. Love it. We'll be tuning in. And the good thing about today is we've been able to put the face to the voice. Absolutely. The pleasure, Mr. Max. Very nice Mr. to Sir see James you. Mr. James Max, great pleasure. Oh, well, there we and, go. Thanks uh, very much indeed. I'll go and get the electric car and leave you where you're Aston. Listen, I'm going to no, I'm going to go and I'm going to go and use my legs now to go to my next meeting. Oh well, I know it's best. amazing. I just hope it doesn't piss down with rain. <laughs> I think we're actually about to get caught here. Anyway, we'll we let are. you go, and I'll see you soon. Nice Cheers. To see you. Cheers.